I will always have a Panerai in my collection mm. because this is my first entrance into uh, luxury uh, watches. And I'll tell you a quick story. I remember driving down the FDR Drive and I was doing about 70 and the, the guy was honking his horn next to me. And I turned to him. I said, What's, I'm not even in your lane. Why are you honking your horn? He said, no, a thick Russian accent. No, no, no. That's a Panerai you have on, right? <laughs> And I said, yeah. And he said, beautiful watch. And then he pulled off. And I was like, Jesus Christ. But ever since then, I, was, I, I, got, I have to have one in my collection. Alan Wright, welcome to Talking Watches. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Tell the folks at home a little bit about uh, yourself and what you do and how you got into watch collecting. Well, my name is Alan Wright. I'm originally from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm a crane operator by trade. Now I represent them as far as a, I'm an in-house lobbyist as well as a business representative. And I got into collecting watches probably uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, my dad always wore a watch. My father was a construction worker as well. Uh, whenever he would come home from work, he would take a shower and he would put this this watch on. It was a gold plated, but it was like a elastic. So when you mm -hmm. just even stretch it out, yep. <laughs> put, it, put it on. <laughs> and he wore that thing like it was a Rolex. Um, so, I, I, so as a young person, always watching him getting ready to go out and whether it was going out with his friends or going to church, putting that watch on, I just made that association like you're supposed to have a watch. Yeah. And then uh, in college, I bought me uh, a Tag a tag Heuer, mm -hmm. uh, a fake one. Knowingly, I know. Knowingly? I know, All knowing, right. Yeah, yeah. knowingly. <laughs> you're on a budget when you're in yeah, college. You gotta yeah. make it work. <laughs> yeah, but I wore that watch like I was, you know, Gordon Gecko. I wore that watch, <laughs> you know, you couldn't tell me anything. Uh, and then once I graduated school, I was uh, walking down uh, Columbus Circle and there was a jewelry store. And I turned and I looked, and it was the real version of the tag mm -hmm. that I had. So I put the watch on, lay away, and, uh, you know, in hindsight, I probably paid twice what the watch was worth, but I got it and it was like a, a jolt went up my arm when I put it on because, mm -hmm. you know, I like I have a real one now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't have a fake watch anymore. I have a real one. And then uh, I, I had that for a while and I, I used to always go to uh, Fifth Avenue and go side of different watch houses. And then uh, a gentleman at the Panerai table he introduced me to um, you can trade a watch in mm -hmm. towards another watch, and that blew my mind. I was like, "You can do that!" <laughs> so I started trading in three or four of these mm -hmm. watches to get a really nice piece, mm -hmm. and then I just finally got to this point, and that's where I matured in my watch collecting. I actually have pieces that mean something to me. So let's get into the watches that are yours and sit with your taste. Talk to me about this Royal Oak. That watch, I probably got about uh, 14 years ago, approximately. That at the time represented my grail watch. Mm -hmm. I probably <laughs> traded in three or four watches to get mm -hmm. that. But when I got that, it was like that moment from Pulp Fiction when he opened the suitcase and the light shines. Yep. <laughs> like, that's how I felt when I got that watch. So that's what it represents. And uh, actually, I will always keep that watch because I got married in that watch. Oh, wow. So that was, as you can imagine, a huge moment a in my day. life. So. I will always, always keep that. And I, and I just love, to me, it's like a rugged elegance. Mm -hmm. It's like you could wear that out to a basketball game or, you know, you could put on a nice suit and, and have that watch on. I just think that watch is able to flow um, perfectly into whatever you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And the offshore isn't for everybody. Why the offshore? Um, it looks strong and, in and intimidating, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it could be subtle and smooth, so yeah. that's why I liked it. I, I, at, the t at that time, I wanted a watch that I felt as though I could wear anywhere. It's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Um, all right, and then we have, kind of continuing the nautical theme, the Vacheron Overseas. 
Yes, that watch, uh, I just think is so pretty. Yeah. And the, and the bracelet is the best bracelet that I've ever worn on a watch. Oh, interesting. You could cha interchange, the, you know, mm -hmm. each little uh, section you could take out, you could, you could put it back in or whatever. So it fits so snug and so nice. It kind of reminds me when I used to sneak and put on my dad's watch, it reminds me of that feel. Mm -hmm. So I love it for that. Um, it's currently the only bracelet we have of the watches on the table. Is that something that hasn't normally been your style? Or? No, I'm a strap guy. Yeah. I'm a strap because I love, like I said, I love a snug fit. Mm -hmm. That's one thing uh, I'm a snob about. If I'm somewhere <laughs> and I see someone and their watch is swimming on their arm, I'm mm -hmm. like, ugh. Jangling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? So, yeah, so I love a tight fit on, on, on my wrist. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just like that. There's beautiful texture on the style, too. Yes, yes. It's, for me, if you're going to have a watch on a bracelet or sports watch, I think that's it for me. Mm -hmm. You have a couple of pieces that feel a little surprising or like that aren't kind of the mainstream picks. This is the Patek Philippe Gondolo. Yes. Walk me through what attracted you to this particular piece. Um, actually, these two pieces are related. Mm. I wanted to get a, a Patek, and uh, I finally felt as though that I got to a point in my life where I was comfortable enough with myself, and also I ach achieved enough things that I deserved I, I deserved one. Mm -hmm. So I started looking, I decided I wanted a collar driver. Mm -hmm. So while looking for the collar driver, I stumbled upon this. Uh-huh. And this just blew my mind when I saw it. And this being the Rolex Cellini yes. moon face. I just thought this was the prettiest watch I had ever seen. Mm -hmm. And what really uh, attracted me to it is the fact that it is a Rolex and it's not what you are usually used to seeing when someone has on a Rolex. Mm -hmm. So I put the collar driver aside yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got this. So that's so that's how these two are related. Mm -hmm. So that, but that itch was still there to have a Patek. Mm -hmm. So at one time I was thinking about getting a, a Roadster, or a, a Mule or something like that. So I, I love that shape. And while looking at those watches, I stumbled upon this. Mm -hmm. And it had everything that I wanted. It had the shape, it, it was the name and the brand that I wanted. And it was a watch that I didn't see on anyone else before. Mm -hmm. So I really uh, like that. I just think it's beautiful. I, I just got this ostrich strap for it. I, I think that really makes it pop. And mm -hmm. I, just, I, just, I just love that watch. Even though this is my favorite out of my, my, all, my whole collection, this watch symbolizes the most. Yeah, and it's got a moon phase and just this uh, day and date and it's just a yes yes and, and it doesn't have <laughs> a lot of complications because I've had watches with a lot of complications I'm like well I can't see that yeah <laughs> <laughs> practical I, practical yeah, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I found myself like taking a picture of the watch and blowing it up so I could <laughs> Shake the yeah. air so I can do the day and date. I was like, this is, doesn't make any sense. So with this, it's, everything is big and, and, mm -hmm. and you can see it. It's fully legible. Yeah. I don't need to have my glasses on. <laughs> And I just and I just love it. It's beautiful, white gold, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, let's go to this Cellini really quickly. It's an Everose, yes. which is uh, my, one of my favorite metals. How did you find this kind of when you were up late at night googling Calatravas? <laughs> yes, that's what it is. My wife probably hates that because every moment she look at me on my phone or just it's, 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 <laughs> it's, like, it's like an exercise that you know you don't even know you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a moment. Oh, let me see what's out there. Yeah. You know, so it, and and I and I was just looking. For the collar tribe, I found this, and I was, I was just taken back. I just think the watch is just beautiful. Had you had moon phase watches before? Or was this your first time? That was that my first time doing. That was my first time doing that doing that complication. But like I said, it's uh, it's one of those complications that uh, I can see. <laughs> so yeah. it, it really attracts. And the blue on, on that on that dial is just beautiful. This also symbolizes uh, me getting things that I like because mm -hmm. it's not this is not an extremely popular watch yeah. it's not but it's something that when I saw it I fell in love with mm -hmm. so my goal was to have one of these by the time I was 50 mm -hmm. and um, this would be 
my present to myself mm -hmm. for, for my birthday. That's a, that's a great birthday gift. We should all <laughs> take a page <laughs> but, out of your book. But, but hey, like, like, you know, we talk about uh, me trading the watches. Once again, I still had, I traded in three watches for mm -hmm. that, you know, but that, that is a watch that I said I could grow old with. Yeah. That's something, I don't have a son, but I have a daughter. And I was like, that, that's something that I could pass on to her. How interested is she in collecting? Oh, uh, she's my little mini me, so she wants to do uh, everything uh, <laughs> that I do. So she actually has a watch that she does put on oh, that, that she wears. It's like a, a little Looney Tunes watch that mm -hmm. makes a lot of noise when she opens <laughs> it up. But uh, she under she understands the love affair that daddy has with her watches. She doesn't pick them up because I told her, I said, you drop it, mm -hmm. that's a serious offense. Yeah. So she, she knows even if she passes one to me, she both hands and mm -hmm. she's very she's very careful. I even got my wife into it some, but every time she's gotten promotion, I've gotten her a watch. So they attach they're attached to, to, to something. Yeah. Her taste has grown exponentially <laughs> quickly too <laughs> from somebody that never <laughs> was into them. I'm like, you want that? Mm -hmm. Like that's a big leap. Yeah. How you get all the way to here? <laughs> But uh, she has something that she wants to get for herself that, you know, and I'm proud of, of the selection she's mm -hmm. made. You know, she wants a, a JLC for herself. And, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so I've spread it throughout my family. Yeah, it's now a family activity. All right, so sort of the uh, dark horse of these watches that we're looking at today is this Panerai. Mm -hmm. Walk me through this and where it kind of sits in your collection and your collecting. I will always have a Panerai in my collection mm. because after the tag, this is my first entrance into uh, luxury uh, watches. And uh, the first watch I ever really put any serious money towards mm -hmm. was a Panerai. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a quick story. I remember driving down the FDR Drive and I was doing about 70 and the, the guy was honking his horn next to me and I turned to him, I said, What's, I'm not even in your lane. Why are you honking your horn? He said, no, no, a thick Russian accent. No, 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 that's a Panerai you have on, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he said, beautiful watch. And he pulled off. And I was like, Jesus Christ. But. <laughs> Ever since then, I was I, I got I have to have one in my collection. So that is a watch where, that's my weekend watch probably. Mm -hmm. That's when, when I'm just you know running around with. I have a five year old daughter. When I'm doing things with her and my wife, that's something that I would put on. It's ceramic. It's all yeah. it's all black. So it goes with any and everything. I put a rubber strap on it and uh, I just love it. It's a strong look. Yes, yes, that's right. It's, it's very strong, mm -hmm. very, very Batman-like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I love it. So all five of these are modern watches. Mm -hmm. Can you sort of talk us through what your attraction to modern watches, what it has to do with perhaps your lifestyle or have you owned vintage watches before? No, I haven't, but the funny thing is these two watches sort of have a, a vintage look to mm -hmm. them. I think it allows me to have that look without the the worry or the, or the upkeep or the, or the maintenance mm -hmm. of, of an older watch. You know, I, I wouldn't not get an older watch, but uh, one hasn't caught my eye. Mm -hmm. As I said, I, I, I have to have that. Yeah. So, and, and actually, these none of these watches are um, new. Yeah. They're all, except for this one. This mm -hmm. one came out uh, a few years ago, but all of these watches, you know, came out 10, 12. Classic, yeah. yeah, yeah, a while ago. So mm -hmm. I, I feel as though I have watches that fit me and uh, and I don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I've bought watches and <laughs> had them on and like two weeks later, I'm like, why did I get this? Yeah. <laughs> this is important. Yeah, I've never felt like that with any of these. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing that kind of strikes me in talking to you is that you wear all of these. You're not someone who is like overly precious. With no, 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 no. I, I wear them. Actually, I respect someone when I see little love dings and little scratches and mm -hmm. stuff like that because you know, you get these things to to enjoy them. Yeah. You know, th th that's what they're here for. And you know, and that and you asked me about like vintage watches. That's the one thing I do like about vintage watches. Mm -hmm. I like a, a you know, looking back and things were just different back then. I think they took more they, they weren't mass produced like they are now, so they took their time and these things are special. 
So you were a crane operator for many years. Did you wear a watch when you were working? Where did that sort of fit into that part of your job? Did you have like a G-Shock that you beat up? Uh, yes, it's funny, yes. And then I, I gave that to, to my nephew, but I didn't uh, usually like to wear a watch when I worked because, mm -hmm. You know, on the construction site, there are so many things that could happen. But mm -hmm. as far as a crane operation or any heavy machine, when I'm watching someone do it, and I understand what it takes to do that, it's, it's art to me, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. So, you know, and so is, you know, uh, watches. You know, watches fall in that same vein. They're the little pieces of art that you get to wear everywhere. And so collecting is just a, a beautiful and great thing. You're a lobbyist now, you work with the union, correct? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that people still, when they hear like construction are kind of surprised that you have this collection of very delicate pieces? Uh, yes, but that's why uh, I, I believe I, I, I love this because this is a, as I said, the Audemars like rugged elegance. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a construction field, but I'm able to still enjoy these elegant things. Yeah. So I love to be able to uh, go back and forth into both worlds. Um, it kind of symbolizes that uh, there's not just one thing to me. Mm -hmm. You know, people are shocked, but they shouldn't be. Yeah. You spoke really beautifully about in construction that it is art that you're building these pieces together. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has influenced your appreciation for sort of what goes into the craft of watchmaking? Definitely, it's, it's, it's a respect that you have for uh, the watch. There's more than just liking it. And these watch companies have been around for such a long time to, to know that they were able to do this back then. Mm -hmm. It's simply amazing. Mm -hmm. So to have it now is on your wrist, it's just, it just, just makes me uh, feel good. I really feel as though I'm not fully dressed yeah. until I put on a watch. Mm -hmm. You know, if I leave the house and uh, you know I don't have a watch on, I'll turn back yeah. <laughs> and, and put a watch on. For me to have this mechanism on your wrist that keeps time like that and date, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just it just feels good to, to have it on and to uh, know that you can, you can count on it. You mentioned your dad had kind of a ritual where he would come home, take a shower. Where, do you have rituals with your watches? Yes, yes. Uh, my, wa my wife bought me a, a nice watch winder, so I make sure I'm very vain. I always put them away mm -hmm. and I always, and I have, uh, <laughs> and everywhere, and, and where they sit, matters too. I group them appropriately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like these two are always together. Mm -hmm. This one, these two are always together. Yeah. This is kind of the outlier. So it's yeah. by so it's by itself. It's a little but moody. Yes, yes. Just, but I have one more watch that I want to get. So uh, he will have a partner soon. Yeah. Let's, what is the watch that you want to get? Where do you sort of feel like you are in your collecting? Do you think you're almost done if we're ever really um, done? This is the first time, like I said, I, at one time I had a, a, a lot of watches. This is the first time that I actually feel satiated mm -hmm. and I haven't, I don't find myself looking every single day yeah. like, like I used to. Slowly but surely it's starting to come back because uh, I'm, uh, I hate to be a cliche, but uh, for the midlife crisis, but like I said, I'm turning <laughs> 50. So I want, <laughs> this might sound corny, but I want to get a sports car. <laughs> so. The heart wants what it wants. Yeah, it wants <laughs> what it wants. I think crazy, but you know, I want to, I want to uh, get one. And I think you need the appropriate watch for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need is a strong yeah, word, any, but yeah. Any excuse, yeah. any excuse. We'll make it work. So, I kind of had my eyes, I had one at one time and I didn't appreciate it. I had one at a Tag Monaco mm -hmm. when I was probably uh, 28, 29. And you know, I regret getting rid of it. So I uh, found one that I want and I think that is the proper uh, watch to have. Yeah. If you're gonna have a, a, a weekend little car that you play around with. Yeah, and it kind of goes full circle in your collecting journey with the tag, the both the authentic and less yes. than authentic version. Yes, because like I, I keep this because this is my um, first entrance into the, the higher end, mm -hmm. but the tag is really the first watch that really started it all. Mm -hmm. So I figured I should have one of those in my collection. Yeah. Um, well, Alan, 
Thank you so much again for chatting with us and happy early 50th birthday. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a, a great honor for me. And this is another thing about watches, you know, because I love watches and do this, I, I get to speak with you, mm -hmm. you know. So this is another thing that watches have uh, opened up a door for me. Fantastic. <laughs>